And so, you know, you've kind of brought me uh, to my, my last couple of questions. You know, the first of them being, you know, 3-5 is, is probably one of the most storied battalions in the entire Marine Corps. So just uh, want to, you know, give people an idea of their strength and their resolve. And also uh, want to hear what you want to say to the families uh, here in San Diego who have Marines and sailors who are there fighting that fight so hard. Well, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines is one of the truly historic uh, battalions in the Marine Corps. It has a reputation uh, suppress suppressed by no one. Uh, and units that have that kind of reputation fight to that kind of reputation. And, and that's the way 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines has, has, uh, has taken on this fight over here. They've been given a very difficult mission. They're in some tough terrain. They're fighting against, as I said, a desperate enemy who's, uh, who's hanging on. And they've, they've taken some casualties and taken some significant casualties early. But none of that has stopped them one bit. They continue to advance. They continue to take the fight to the enemy. They continue to inflict many, many more casualties on the enemy than the enemy does on them. Their fighting spirit hasn't waned. Their motivation hasn't waned. Their focus on their mission hasn't waned. When I go up and talk to them, they, they tell me, sir, bring it on. We are ready. We're ready to take it to the enemy, defeat him, and we'll go home with pride. We'll go home with a job well done. We'll go home knowing we've upheld the reputation of uh, not only the Marine Corps, but certainly one of the historic battalions in the Marine Corps. You could not ask for a better group, a greater group of young men, Marines and sailors, officers and enlisted, that make up the 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. I stand in awe every day of their courage, their dedication, and the, and the, way, they, uh, the way they live up to their historic past. I also stand in awe every day of their families. I realize over here you're, you're very focused on what you're doing every day. You're focused on that one moment in time. You're focused on uh, the mission that you have to do. Our families back home don't have that luxury. They have time on their hands when they can worry, when they can think. They see the car come up the street that's delivering the bad news. I, I know how gut-wrenching that must be to the, to the wives, to the spouses, to the children of, of those involved. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, the courage they've shown is equal to the courage that their husbands have shown out on the battlefield. All of them have, have stood to. For the, for the spouses who are wounded, their families rush to them, give them that, that, that support they so desperately need, and, and encourage them to, uh, to recover and to go on to full lives. And the courage of the wives and children I've seen in Bethesda is absolutely marvelous. Uh, the support of the communities, uh, both locally there in Southern California, and really throughout the country, again, has just been absolutely remarkable. I think everybody realizes the generation fighting this war over here. Our young people, the 18 to 25-year-olds, are the best our country has. They're the greatest generation we've ever raised. They're volunteers. They know the threat. They don't have to be here. 99.9% .9 of their friends don't come over here, and yet they have the courage to take the step forward and do the job that has to be done. I stand in awe of them. And, I'm, and let me just express my deepest sympathies to all of the families who have either lost a family member or have had a family member wounded over here. Uh, my heart goes out. Uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a father, I, I can only imagine the grief that goes through. As, as a married man, I can only imagine the grief that you go through when you lose your spouse. Uh, it is absolutely a tremendous compliment uh, to all of those families back home, how well they take it, how well they stand up. All the family support out here is so critical, so critical. The letters that come out, the phone calls that come out, the emails that come out, the packages that come out mean so much to everybody out here. I know especially now during the holiday season when everyone's thoughts turn to their families and when it's uh, traditional to bring the families around and enjoy the holidays together, to have a spouse out on the front lines is extraordinarily tough. To have your, hu your husband and or your, your parent out on the front lines is very, very tough. And yet I have never heard a complaint come from back home. I have never heard a disparaging word come from back home. I have heard nothing but words of support and signs of love. And so I would like to pass on my best wishes at this time of the year on behalf of all the Marines out here uh, and, and all the Marines uh, all throughout the world. The Marines out here who are fighting the fight and who come out of Southern California, whose families are listening to this, uh, they want to be home with you. They wish they could be home with you, but they know they have a job to do over here and they don't want to leave until it's done and done right. And they are doing it right. So my best wishes to all of you. My thoughts go out to you over the holiday season, and I look forward to a happy and joyous homecoming for everybody in the year to come. 
Excellent, sir. Uh, I don't think you can say it any better than that. Um, I thank you for your time and, and, and for joining us. Um, Semper Fi. Well, Alicia, thank yeah, you for so your support you go, and uh, what you do for us. I tell you what, you help you help keep the home fires burning. So please, uh, please take my. I thank you very much for the support you show us and what you do for our families to keep them informed. And I hope you have a great holiday. Thank you. You too, sir. Now, before I let you go, I All want right. to talk um, about you. Don't before I, before I let you go. I want you to talk a little bit about, you talked about a, um, an intense winter offensive coming up. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how uh, you guys have uh, bolstered forces there for the 3-5? I know you've done a lot to fortify uh, forward operating bases, increase security, things like that. I just wanted to kind of get your comments on that before you go. Sure. Um we, we believe that here in the in Helmand province, uh, we have the enemy backpedaling. We believe that we have him on his back foot, and he's having a difficult time resupplying himself. He's having a diff difficult time attracting support, having a difficult time uh, resupplying his, uh, his needs, and a difficult time maintaining himself on the battlefield. Traditionally, uh, in years past, the winter has been a time of, uh, of less activity. It's been a time of uh, fewer engagements, a time when the enemy has a chance to recover a little bit, to regroup. Uh, to go home as he likes to do and, uh, and take some time and rest up for the spring offensive. This year, we do not intend to give him that luxury. We intend to press him now, press him tomorrow, and press him every day until he, uh, until he decides to, uh, to give up. Uh, we have a very aggressive plan laid out. All of our units are involved in it. We will press him throughout the uh, AO wherever he is, wherever he thinks he can go to rest, wherever he thinks he can go to ground, wherever he thinks he can take a time out and sit down for a bit, he's going to find uh, a member of the coalition force uh, pressing him hard. Uh, we believe that there is a time of decisions coming up. We believe that there is a time in which we can make a true, uh, have a real true battlefield solution uh, in, within the Helmand province, and that's the time this winter uh, when he will not be as, uh, as mobile as he usually is, not be as supplied as he normally is, and his units will not be at the strength they normally are. Most of his leadership has already fled to Pakistan and doesn't intend to come back to the province anytime soon. We will take advantage of that uh, lack of leadership, again, to press on that, uh, on that enemy soldier until he breaks. Excellent. Thank you, sir. That's it, I promise. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night.